This is eHobbyist blog, a log of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. In this video, I was going to do some tests of the printed circuit version of the variable positive power supply, and then I was going to produce the second board and maybe mount both of them to the enclosure. That's not exactly what happened. Now, what actually happened a couple of days ago, I, the first thing I did was forget to turn the video on. I use a video camera as a log for my own purposes, and it's the basis for this YouTube video, usually. Anyhow, I used the prototyping system, the output of the rectifier filter module for the 0 to 20 volt system was attached to the first two binding posts. This is not normally the way they would be connected, but it facilitates testing of these power modules. And then I connected these binding posts to the printed circuit version of the variable positive power supply and connected the output of that printed circuit to a digital voltmeter. And then I turned the power on and I got what I expected to get. Now, in my mind, this is a secondary thing to do. It was necessary, but yawn. I expected everything to be working, and it was just a kind of a waste of time. In my mind, I was thinking about the next steps. I was thinking about how to produce the second card, and how to mount the cards, and more to the point, I was already engaged in designing the current buffered inverting amplifier that I was going to use for the second power supply, the complementary power supply. And I really wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to this. It was just like about on the back burner, something necessary I have to do. I had the current potentiometer turned to maximum, and I had the voltage adjustment in a centered range, and I got a reasonable voltage, something around 10 volts, and then I set it to maximum, and I got something a little less than what I saw on the breadboarded version, but way above my 20 volt requirement. And then I turned it down to minimum, and I got a little higher than I saw in the breadboard version. Breadboard version, I saw about 90 millivolts here. I was looking at 110, but still quite usable and well within the useful range. And then I adjusted the current limiting potentiometer, expecting to see no changes in the voltage. I reset the voltage to mid-range. I set the current limit to mid-range, saw no change in the voltage. Then I set it to minimum current, saw no change in the voltage, then put it back to maximum. Well, this whole test took place over 90 seconds. Several seconds after restoring the current limiting to its maximum setting, I smelled the stench of electronic death, which I'd smelled before, so I knew what it was. I immediately turned off the AC power and disconnected the rectifier filter module from the printed circuit card, and at the same time, I used my finger to check the IC, to check the three transistors and several of the resistors looking for something that was particularly hot, and there was nothing. Now I'm completely flustered, in panic mode. <laughs> this is not something I expected at all. So well, what's different about this circuit than the one I had breadboarded and tested? I've got three diodes here. I decided to take the diodes out. All of this without the video camera on, I desoldered these diodes and, and pulled them out of the circuit. Okay, so now having pulled the diodes out of the board, I need to conduct a test. I'm connecting the negative input to the negative binding post. Connecting a banana plug test cable to an alligator clip. I connect the negative of the digital voltmeter and connect the positive of the digital voltmeter to a probe. I just want to check to make sure it's going to read zero. I want to make sure that the output negative is zero. And now I'm going to connect to the input. And the input shows 28.92. Okay. Now we're going to connect the positive input to the digital multimeter to the output of the power supply and alligator clip the power in 
This is without the diodes, and I expect to see some intermediate voltage of 10 volts. And I'm looking at 2.7 millivolts. Touching all the components, looking for sources of heat, and there is none. Nothing, none of these components is any hotter than any of the others. Okay, let me disconnect this before I do any further damage. So I put this aside and I decided I was not going to look at another piece of electronics for the next decade. Next day, yesterday I guess, I woke up and decided I was not going to let this circuit get the best of me. The first thing I did was to review this, the printed circuit layout point by point, node by node, trace by trace. I compared the printed circuit layout to the circuit diagram, and after an hour or so, I was convinced that this printed circuit layout is an accurate representation of the circuit diagram. Next, in my review and concerted logical attack on this thing, was to take a look at polarities. Now, there's only one diode, and the polarity on that was checked, and it makes sense. There are electrolytic capacitors. If they are misaligned, the positive connected to the negative, then maybe that would explain failure of the circuit. So I looked at each one of these electrolytic capacitors, the aluminum electrolytics and the smaller uh, tantum electrolytics, uh, comparing uh, the polarities and against what was in the circuit diagram, and everything seems to be correct. There's nothing that I could see that was wrong. This transistor doesn't quite look right. The, the footprint is a, a semicircle for the three leads, and the 3906 was an inline lead. And if I can get a look at the numbering on this, which is really difficult to read, the numbering is certainly not 3906. <laughs> it, it, it looks like 56405 and IIY430. Uh, so this may be a substitute for 3906. But that is a 3906, and it's uh, somewhat different markings <laughs> than what I've got in there. So whatever I've got in there was not originally breadboarded. All right, so I know, I know there's a questionable transistor Q3 in here, and let me get some voltage readings. I'm just going to get whatever I can. I, I've got one of these fat probes, which is not at all helpful, but I didn't, I'm not going to change it. The voltage is coming into the IC, 27.06, that's fine. The voltage on, on either side of the resistor, and that's okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Now let me check the Q3. That totally don't make sense. CBE, the base and emitter of the transistor, and the collector would be the output, and that does make sense. There's nothing coming out. I am now convinced that what I want to do is remove Q3, the current limiting transistor, which is not the 3906 that I breadboarded originally. I'm using solder wick, and let me coat this solder wick with some flux, because it's old solder wicks, and the flux makes it easier to wick away the solder. Now, if I can find the bleeping transistor leads on here, I'm going to buy the solder wick. And the temperature on this soldering iron is 350 degrees. I'm not playing around here, at least for now. I don't care about this particular transistor or anything it's connected with. I am cooling it down to make sure the other components don't get too hot. And the, the solder wick itself is kind of a heat sink.
Now as it's loosened up, let me apply the soldering iron a bit, and there comes the transistor. Okay, now without the current limiting transistor, all I'm doing is sacrificing a current limiting function. Everything else should work, but does it? want to make sure I've got ground properly connected and that I have an input voltage. want to make sure the output capacitors are grounded, connect to ground, and connect to the power output. And now we'll connect the input, and hopefully without this transistor I get... Uh, absolutely nothing. I'm going to use a fine probe. Pin 14 is not connected. We don't care what the reading is. Pin 13 is a compensation. Pin 12, 27.28, that's, that's fine. Pin 11 is coming in at, I don't believe that, that's 5 millivolts, all right. 11 is the VC, uh, v, is a collector voltage. V out coming in at also low voltage, which it should be uh, based on what I'm seeing, 16.3 millivolts. Uh, VZ, the Zener diode out, should be zero and is. Pin 8's not connected. Pin 7 should be ground and it is. Pin 6 should be V ref and I don't believe what I'm seeing here. <laughs> Ouch! That should be 7.15. This is a long way from 7.15. There's something wrong here. <sighs> now, this is the VREF part of it, and I, I don't see how VREF could fail, but it, I'm looking at it. It apparently has. Something happened to this IC. Now, was the original problem with VREF? 26.42 millivolts on the inverting amplifier and on, a, on the non-inverting input. I don't know if I got the inverting in input. I may have missed it. They're both low and that they should be roughly the same. Two and three is not used. One is not connected. I, I can't believe VREF. Let me just check that again. I've got zero on pin seven and 0 0.861 on uh, pin six. So VREF is, uh, is gone, is blown. Okay, having deftly removed the uh, integrated circuits, I am now going to first mark the old IC, the 723 with an X on top, scribing tool. Make sure I don't use it again. I mean, that's IC socket inserted, because I intend to repeat these tests with a new uh, 723 IC, and uh, there's no reason <laughs> that I can think of after uh, retesting this with a new IC why it shouldn't blow up in the same way it blew up now. So I need an easy way to remove the IC and replace it with something else. Hopefully, the next time it blows up, I'll be prepared and we'll get a better idea of what actually happened. In this case, it apparently is either a primary or secondary problem is the VREF. Somehow VREF maybe was short-circuited. I don't see it. Anyhow, I am using a 1 16th of an inch, I think, chisel tip. This time I'm trying to solder this thing with a 300 degree temperature, and it seems to be working. I've tried this in the past, but not recently. 300 degrees did not work for me then, but with this iron, apparently it does. I know it's 300 degrees because I checked the temperature when I got the iron. I'm trying to keep things relatively cool and uh, soldering in different places because there are other components still soldered here and I don't want to do any additional heat damage to them. Now I'm going to put a 4-reel 3906 transistor in place. And some plucks and I'll just solder this. Clip the leads off. And now I'm ready for another test, once I plug in an IC. Okay, back in business. In the next video, I'll do what I intended to do in this video. More thorough testing, and I fully expect it to blow up again, but we shall see. If you like this video, and the idea of the channel, click on the YouTube thumbs up icon. If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, 
make corrections to published videos or voice your opinion on related matters, then leave a YouTube comment. If you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form, such as high-res graphics, files in different formats, lists of references, uh, go to the corresponding website. Until the next time, good day.